So I'm seeing so many out there saying LSU are going to lose four games, lose five games, not even make the college football playoff in an, in its expanded uh, format. I've seen a lot of SEC talking heads say LSU are going to be in a year of transition with Brian Kelly. It's really going to be year four where everything should be set up for them to win. Garrett Nussmeyer's second year, prospectively, all that type of stuff. They've, they've set out the narratives. LSU don't have the weapons to replace Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr. At least the weapons that they've figured out are the guys to replace them at this point. Um, the defense still being question marks, all that stuff. The loss of production. They, they, they've said all of these things. We've heard it all. The quarterback, his first season, okay. The defense being so horrendously terrible. I get it. I get it. Trust me, I do. But I don't believe it. And here's why. When you look at this LSU squad from 10,000 feet, take off your purple and gold shades right now, okay? But look at the team we know. This is a team in transition, right? We just lost a Heisman winner. We just lost two first-round pick receivers, including one in the first six picks, a top-10 pick receiver, just like LSU typically continuously does. And we know the value of that dude walking out the door. And still losing, you know, a key center, Charles Turner. Huge dude who really, like, solidified that offensive line over the last year and a half, season and a half, really, with, with, the, with these Tigers. When Charles Turner came in at center, week three, Mississippi State into the, in 2022, everything came together for that offensive line. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what I'm looking at here is from 10,000 feet that people are overlooking with this current team and why I think this team can not only get in the college football playoff and win big is because you're overlooking that this is, yes, we've lost some guys, we've lost some veterans, we've lost some leaders, but at the same time, LSU have a different team this year where the experience – and the leadership is a lot younger than we're used to. A guy like Will Campbell, a guy like Emory Jones, you know, being these leaders. But they've been there and done that for now. This is going into their third season. Garrett Nussmeyer going into year four at LSU. You know, I, I think people are overlooking there is a lot of leadership here. Kyron Lacey, this is his sixth year in college. John Emory Jr., as well. Josh Williams as well. There are some older veterans on here who are going to be playing in key roles. And then you've got on the other end of the spectrum, true freshman, freshman DJ Chester at center, and likely a bevy of true freshman defensive linemen playing in a variety of roles throughout the year. But you've got these core 2021 guys that I think make up the, the heartbeat of this team. Guys who had to wait their turn. They're kind of an anomaly in the current college football landscape. you got Garrett Nussmeyer. You, we all know the story. He had to wait three years behind like how many different starting quarterbacks. Max Johnson, Jaden Daniels, and then you know, at one point it was going to be Miles Brennan. You know, he's been behind three different quarterbacks now. Oh, you could even include in 2021 uh, T.J. Finley, right? Yes. So that's that's even more. So, my lord. Um, and then you got Chris Hilton Jr. a part of that a part of that 2021 group. Sage Ryan a part of that 2021 group. These are all guys who had to wait their turn. Garrett Dellinger, he he didn't have to completely wait his turn, but man, he's kind of had to wait for for his flowers. He's been awesome, and he got a lot of shit in 2022 but played through a lot of injuries, a lot of adversity, and took the pain and played some big snaps for LSU. And now he is someone that our offensive line cannot do without. That guy's an Iron Man, what he plays through. And so if he's out for a game, it's, it's he literally had like three injuries at one point, like a knee, a, a hand, and like a shoulder. It was ridiculous. 
It was ridiculous how much he went through, battled through. But you've got these key veterans. A guy like Kyron Lacey who's now had to wait his turn as well. Watch Brian Thomas Jr. catch 17 touchdowns. Watch Malik Neighbors set all the LSU records. Surely him, Chris Hilton Jr., they're going to be licking their lips, licking their chops, wanting to, to really set a tone here. You've got that core group of guys who have that dog in them, that, that fight in them that I think is kind of the core identity of this team. We're, we might be winning ugly. We might be, be doing it this way that you didn't expect. We might not be scoring 45, 50 points even though we've got the weapons to do it. We haven't figured that out yet, but we are going to win any way we can, any way possible. That kind of like... Ah, rip it out of the out of the hand of the others by the jaws. You know that kind of tenacity. That's what I think it, this team is going to be about. When you're talking about a team that's led by its offensive line, no one's talking about this as well. This is the number one offensive line in America, not even close. Number one offensive lineman in America, and Will Campbell going to be a number one overall pick, if not, you know, top five pick. Will Campbell is the truth. And then you got Emory Jones, who's going to be another first rounder. Garrett Dellinger, as we just talked about. Miles Frazier, all those guys now into their third year starting together. And a trusted, trusted redshirt freshman, DJ Chester at center. With an offensive line like that, you can settle down a quarterback who is in his first year, all these questions, transition, blah, 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 blah. You know, all these big expectations, following a Heisman winner. He can handle that with a great offensive line protecting his ass and keeping him mentally fresh. You know what I'm saying? Not taking too many hits every second. He knows what to expect from those guys. He knows what he can rely on with those guys. And you saw it against Wisconsin. You saw it in some big moments against Georgia in 2022. It's This cat can do this. He can absolutely be the SEC's best quarterback in year one as a starter because really everyone's overlooking this f- factor as well the, the best offensive line where we're going to run the ball a lot we're going to win games running the football controlling possession to keep our defense off the field keep our defense fresh and able to make adjustments so that nothing like 2023 happens again and, and it should not under Blake Baker my god if it does Something's going really bad at LSU with the defense. <laughs> but in doing all of that, running the football, using that offensive line, to, to, which is actually a deep unit behind those four, those five guys, um, to our advantage, that, key, that works for the defense as well. But people are overlooking that Nuss, he's into his 20th appearance now as an LSU quarterback. You know, he's seen every pitfall, every mistake, every success that can that could go on at, at the LSU quarterback throne. And now he's ascended to his own he's taken his own seat. He's you know, surveying the landscape, and I think he knows exactly what he needs to do to win, and that's gonna be any way you want it. That's the way you need it. You know. That's that's the way he's gonna do it, is we're gonna do this any way possible. If, if I have to throw 190 yards today, I don't care. We're going to win this game. If I throw for 500, we're going to win this game. You know, it's. I think you're going to see that type of moxie from Garrett Nussmeyer where he's going to be relaxed, and that type of vibe is going to affect everybody and keep them relaxed as well. Garrett Nussmeyer is also going to, you know, what's going to happen when he gets punched in the face in that USC game, if it happens, or Mississippi State in week three. Um is it Mississippi State in week three? I think so. Um, what happens when that type of stuff happens? How is he going to react? How does he recover? How is he going to be on the fly? I think nothing to worry about with, with Nussmeyer here. I think he is going to be able to respond because of that offensive line in front of him, being able to, to pick him up, protect their quarterback, and keep fighting and improve. Don't let him get hit again. You know what I'm saying? And the ball's going to get out a lot quicker from Nussmeyer. The ball's going to get out a lot quicker. It'll be like how Jaden Daniels would just escape with his legs when the pressure was coming in, the walls were collapsing. 
that's what we're going to see from Nussmeier with sometimes his feet, but mostly just that quick outlet to the running back, outlet to the tight ends, outlet in the, in the flat to the receivers. You're going to see that from Nussmeier to get out of jail. And you're going to see a, a, an offensive rhythm that just kind of keeps ticking along. You know, like the music never stopped by the Grateful Dead. Just kind of that... It's the kind of groove that just keeps going for 10, 15 minutes, however long the, the Grateful Dead want to play it. And so what I see when I look at this LSU team is they actually got a far more experienced quarterback than people realize. They've got the nation's best offensive line. They've got a stable of running backs that is among the SEC's best. When you're talking about Josh Williams, you're talking about John Emery Jr., who still has not hit his ceiling. And his ceiling is pretty damn boundless if he, if he can fully recover from that ACL, which he, which he has, but I'm talking about in a football sense. Can he, has it slowed him down any with his burst? We'll, we'll see all that. You've got Caleb Jackson, though, who's going to be the feature back in the breakthrough rushing artist of this team. Also fantastic as a dual threat, catching the ball out of the backfield as well. You've got the program's greatest tight ends room ever as far as talent and depth. You've got it there with Mason Taylor, proven veteran, Mac Markway, slightly above average experienced uh, sophomore who can really do it all. On, on the field from the tight end position. Caught a touchdown from, from Jaden Daniels, blocked his ass off uh, on other plays. It was fantastic. You've got a lengthy hybrid target man in Kamori and Pimpton. You know, a little, little, little bit of experience, but, but not much. And then you've got a generationally talented, generationally talented, true freshman in trade as green who I think LSU've got to let him play this season. I don't care if he's a project for the future. Let him play. Put him in coach. He's ready to play today, damn it. Um, seriously, this kid cannot wait to see the 6'5", 255 freak go out there and show it. He can run that 440 speed as well. Um, and then you're talking about Really, a secondary, a receiving core, both that have a lot of options, a lot of depth, and just where is you know Cortez Hankton, a receivers coach, and Corey Raymond, DB's coach, going to fit the pieces? How are how are these guys going to figure it out? Is it Kyron Lacy, Chris Hilton Jr., and then Aaron Anderson in the slot, or Xavion Thomas in the slot? You know, you have so many different options. C.J. Anderson, as well, C.J. Anderson. Aaron Anderson, Xavion Thomas, Shelton Sampson. I mean, it, really, the options at receiver just go on and on and on. Kyle Parker could absolutely have over 500, 600 yards this year, and I wouldn't be shocked. That's just how good our receivers are, and it's going to be who's going to step up and just take over the targets. Because if they do, they're going to get some yards, get some get some passes their way, and they're going to score some points. So I really think our running back group, led by a figurehead, a beast of every opponent's burden, Caleb Jackson. You've got a receiving core that's deep. You've got a secondary group that have a lot of fantastic pieces. Jarden Gilbert, Major Burns, who, who really now moved away from coverage, is going to be a lot more effective at the line of scrimmage. Harold Perkins, that absolute freak, who could be even used from linebacker to the secondary. You could put him at safety if you needed to. Um, such as his absolute freakish ways. I think you put Harold at the star, and then you could put Penn and, and Weeks, with Weeks on the field at linebacker. You've got LSU's deepest linebackers room in a long time, since 2019. Unbelievably deep, this linebacker room. Fantastic. I like the options as secondary. It's just figuring out who and, and kind of seeing how they get into things. There's going to be some coverage busts early in the season. I'm just telling you guys. It's going to happen. Don't think our defense is completely retreading unless they can't tackle anyone. But I think there's going to still be some coverage busts here and there um, as our guys kind of figure it, to get, figure it out together and the puzzle pieces get 
put together. But you look at this group. You've got proven veteran experience all over the field, really. You know, Harold Perkins, Greg Penn the third at linebacker, Jarden Gilbert, Major Burns, Sage Ryan, uh, at the back end, Zy Alexander as well. You want to see one of the guys like JV and Toviano or Ashton Stamps get in there and get the, one of those starting spots at corner, though. Um, they had fantastic ends to their freshman year, and I want to see that rewarded. Uh, especially, specifically, JV on Toviano, I think, is a guy you cannot keep off the field. Too talented. Too aggressive as well, which is what our defensive needs. Um, I see a defense that should be probably ranked in the you know, 60, 50 in there. I see an offense that could be ranked easily inside the top 10, top 5. And they don't even have to score, like, 50 points a game to do that. I think they're going to be so efficient and so effective and so balanced that you're not even going to you're not even going to think about Jaden Daniels being missing until you know you don't see that that first play where he's bolting out of the out of the pocket and some guys there. Oh yeah, we don't have Jaden Daniels anymore. A guy who can run 100 miles an hour and just video game automatic get first downs. I think you'll see Garrett uh, have, have some moments where he struggles. I think you'll see Garrett have some adversity he'll have to get through. And I think you'll see Garrett make mistakes, just like anybody. But I think Garrett has the mentality, and I think he's got the people around him, the players around him, the right guys around him, who are going to keep him, you know, keep his shoulders high, keep his chin high. He's not going to dip and get you know frustrated and, and, and get low. That kid doesn't get like that anyway. It takes a lot to get Garrett down. He's going to keep throwing it no matter how many intercepts. He's going to keep battling no matter how many things going against him. So I think you've got that type of a leader as a leader, leader of your locker room. You've just lost a Heisman winning quarterback, and now you've got this dude. Even if you lost Nussmeyer, which would be a catastrophe. You actually have a very good chance, I think, if you played true freshman Colin Hurley at quarterback. It sounds insane, right? I don't care. Colin Hurley's ready for it, and you saw that during the spring game. He makes some plays that just... When he starts for LSU, he's going to be special. And I think if something happens to us, either this season or next... Colin Hurley must be the choice. At least he would he would be my choice. As good as Ricky Collins has been, Colin Hurley has something that is just you can't put your finger on it, but it's tangible. He's a talisman. You've got people like this all over LSU's current team. You've got people like this on LSU's entire sideline staff. There is no excuses for LSU not to be a, a playoff team this year. There are no excuses for LSU to, to not get into the top four, I think, into the semifinal round. Unless some type of crazy thing happens, some crazy last-second loss, whatever. I fully believe this is a team that will be there in that top four, at least this season. They've got a crazy schedule, I understand. We've gone through that schedule in our previews multiple times. It's topsy turvy, it's roller coaster, it's murderer's row. But LSU have all hands on deck. An all hands on deck type of feeling. You know what I'm saying? We're like last year, twenty twenty two as well, there was a kind of feeling that like Jaden Daniels is gonna be the quarterback. Jaden Daniels is gonna be the guy and this is how we're gonna run the offense and that's it. And then Malik Neighbors is gonna get the ball, Brian Thomas Jr. is gonna gonna get the ball, Mason Taylor's gonna get the ball and then we're going to run it. And that's it. This season, offensively, we can do almost anything. Yes, we don't have a rushing quarterback, but now we can have more of a dynamic running game that gets more fed, gets more reps, which equals, you know, chance to really expand and get even better at running the football. So I think you've got every facet here for a special, special season of LSU Tigers football with the, with this roster. And this roster is imperfect. 
This roster has issues. It has flaws. It has holes when you're talking about the defensive interior. But man, when like you know, there's always a silver lining that's like tinted with gold because you'll look at the defensive line and you're you're scratching your head. You've got some headaches. You've got some worries. But then you look at who they're flanked by on the edge or or at defensive end. The talent we've got, you know, the guys right next to those interior dudes. You've got a lot of talent there, stack talent. And so everywhere you look, there's maybe some questions. They've always got some good answers right there. There's always options as well to, to complete the answer to that question. So it comes down to the coaches. How brave are the coaches going to be in their decision-making? How serious, intentional, and trusting are they going to be in their, in their decision-making? How experimental are we going to see some some interesting swaps, some some bizarre movements here with this roster, with, with some of their selections as far as the depth chart? I think fall camp and the battles in fall camp are going to decide a lot. But throughout this season, you're going to not only see rotation, but I think you're also going to see players maybe rise and fall like we've seen every year you see a guy start the season and then he you know ends the season on the bench you've seen that frequently at LSU when guys are just not performing well or guys get injured and they lose their job it's part of the game and I think this is a season where you're going to see a lot of rotation you're going to see a lot of guys on the field that you want to see I just think there's going to be a lot more of an entertainment factor here. With Whereas last year, offense was some of the most entertaining offense I've ever seen outside of 2019 LSU. Unbelievable. Must-see entertainment. But what made that so tough and such a tooth-removing exercise was right after that, you knew you were going to have to watch that, that defense. So it kind of spoiled it. This year, I think we're going to see some good vibes on defense. And we're going to see a, another juggernaut offense. Maybe in a different way than we've seen before. But I think a lot of running the football, a lot of winning it ugly, I think it'll be nevertheless effective. I think this team, their spirit, their vibe, it is about winning ugly. And that's just going to have to be something you might have to get into.